Okay, welcome class to the third unit, Unit 3, which is on development. This video will look at prenatal and the newborn section. Um, it is the first part of your textbook. Most of the slides were created by Kent Corrick, um, and it's also helpful that I got most of the information from the Myers AP textbook um, out of Worth Publishers. So let's begin to kind of look at how this unit is organized. Um, how we're going to break this down is the big five areas here, which is prenatal, newborn, infancy and childhood, adolescent, and then adulthood. We're also going to spend some time looking at each stage of development and the major issues or the major, I would say, accomplishments that happen in each of those stages. But we're also going to reflect on how is each person growing biologically, psychologically, and socially. So the biological influences, how has evolution impacted them, the biological, the brain development particularly, and your genetics, the psychological, what cognitively could be happening at each stage, and then socially, how is the environment influencing them in their development. So you should be pretty confident by the end of this study in terms of how do newborns in prenatal, how are they exposed to the biopsychosocial? Along with looking at the biopsychosocial and the stages of development, we will also be looking at certain theories. Theories look at research and try to predict, predict what will occur with human behavior. So we have an individual who, let's say, is five. Okay. Researchers have studied what behaviors that five-year-old should be doing, whether it's cognitively, morally, okay, or maybe it is socially. So the big five, I would say, that we're going to be looking at is Jean Piaget, and he's responsible for cognitive development. Erickson, Eric Erickson, and he's going to be responsible for the psycho-social um, stages of development, so cognitive and social together. Harry Harlow is going to look at attachment styles and what causes us to be attached to our parents. Sigmund Freud is going to look at the psychoanalytical perspective. And then Lawrence Kohlberg is going to study when we develop our morals. Developmental psychologists are people who study the development of individuals. They examine how people are continually adapting physically, cognitively, and socially from the beginning stages of the womb, prenatal, all the way to death. So overall ideas in environmental psychologist, your book tries to intertwine as well, tries to bring about nurture and nature. How do genetics, our nature, and experiences, the nurture we have, influence our behavior? So that's kind of, again, wrapping up that biopsychosocial. It tries to talk about the continuity and the stages. Is development a gradual process or does it happen in a sequence of separate stages? And then last one, stability and change. Do our personality traits, are they persistent through life or do we change as we develop? Okay, so let's begin with the prenatal development. Prenatal development contains the time when you are in the womb. So when you are in your mom's stomach or uterus, if you want to relate to it. Conception is the first part that happens with prenatal. Conception is when a single sperm cell, a male, penetrates the outer coating of an egg, the female, and fuses to form one fertilized cell. Fertilization is when the egg wel welcomes in the sperm and blocks out others. The sperm and egg fuse to create one egg. And then what's interesting is it blocks out all other sperm. Women's are born, women are born with all the eggs they will ever contain in a lifetime. So when you're born or when you're developed as an individual or when you're conceived, if you're a girl, you will have all the eggs that you will ever need in your lifetime. Males, however, are producing sperm around the clock 24-7. You do get your genetics from your parents. We talked about this in the last unit. You have 23 chromosomes you get from your mom and 23 chromosomes you get from your dad, which make up your genome, okay, and they consist of genes. Okay, the sex in which you are, which is your biological component, 
you get from your father. You get an X from it's the 23rd chromosome, which will tell you that you're a girl, and a Y, which will tell you that you're a male. So if you have a double X chromosome, that means on your 23rd chromosome, that means that you're a woman, and an XY, that's going to tell that you're a male. So now that we have that fertilized egg, okay, it goes through three different stages. It first becomes a zygote, then transitions into an embryo, and then lastly, for the last months of your um, prenatal experience, you are a fetus. So let's break it down. Prenatal development in your zygote. A zygote is a fertilized egg with a hundred, hundreds of cells that become increasingly diverse. So the zygote is when it becomes fertilized. Fewer than one half will survive the first two weeks. So the first two weeks, once it's fertilized, fewer than half of them actually survive. And when it's reproducing all those cells and reproducing and reproducing and reproducing and reproducing all those cells, each one is producing a different function. At about 14 days, the zygote turns into an embryo. And this all happens within what's known as your first trimester, which we'll get to in a little bit. Okay, so after 14 days, it becomes the embryo. What is the embryonic stage? The embryonic stage is pretty much from two to eight weeks. The zygote attaches at this point in time to the uterine wall, and then it becomes the embryo. At four weeks, you usually develop the brain, the lungs, and the heartbeat. At 40 days, usually about six weeks, you can see a visible spine. So this is definitely not a, an embryo at this point in time, and I'll show you guys a picture in a minute. The placenta is formed. This is what I wanted to show you. The placenta is um, attaches to the uterus, and it helps provide you with nutrients and um, food and supplies um, that you're going to need during your kind of stay here. This is all considered, again, part of the first trimester. So here's some pictures of the embryonic stage. You have the cell dividing up at the top, okay, which the zygote is creating all those cells. And then at about four weeks, you have, um, you kind of look like a little, I would say, um, animal from the sea. Um, and this is when you're creating your spine. And then towards the end, you actually have your feet and you have your head structure that's built. And towards the end, you will have a heartbeat. So this is the embryonic stage. Okay. Then after the embryonic stage, you'll go into the fetal stage where you become a fetus. Okay. Eight to nine weeks, an embryo turns into a, a fetus. Most of the organs are developed. Okay. You have your um, brain, your heart. Um, at four months, you usually begin sucking your thumb. They can see the baby begin to suck its thumb, moving around more. Uh, the mom might begin to feel the movement. At eight months, it can hear the mom and respond to the mom. And this is pretty much from the end of the first trimester all the way up to the third. Okay, so often you hear um, a woman respond to you and says, maybe say, states that she's in her first trimester, second trimester, or third trimester. So here's kind of the breakdown of it. The first trimester is when you know you have the zygote, the embryo, and the fetus is beginning to develop. It's pretty much the first three months of pregnancy, and different events happen um, to your body hormonally in the first trimester. It's when probably a lot of change is beginning to happen to you. Second trimester is the four, five, and six. This is when the mom usually begins to hear um, the heartbeat and the kicking that begins to happen, and you're beginning to recognize the um, probably the, the shape of your baby. And then the seventh, eighth, and nine are pretty much from 27 to um, 40 weeks. During this time, the baby, the fetus, is, is pretty much fully developed in terms of heart and lungs, but this is when they're beginning to kind of develop so they can um, take care of themselves outside of the womb. So during the 7th and 9th, usually babies beginning to gain weight. It's beginning to learn how to kind of um, build those functions like the heart and the lungs so it can develop or can live outside the womb. 
So yes, pre uh, pregnancy is a very exciting time for a mom, but it also can be a very stressful time, especially during those first two trimesters. Um, age of viability is the point where the baby can survive if it's born prematurely. So we saw that the first two trimesters, it's one of a major portion of developments um, going on inside um, the uterus. It's beginning to build or create that fetus. After 24 weeks is when, due to technology today, um, they can keep a baby alive um, without being in the mom's womb. However, about 50% of those preemie babies survive um, at this age. And obviously the number is going to increase as the weeks go on, but before 24 weeks, it really needs, um, or after, I would say around this time period, it really needs your the womb because it's supplying them with all those demands that it needs, lung development, heart development. Um, the average baby when it is born, it's about seven pounds and that's at 40 weeks. At 40 weeks is the average uh, time that the mom will um, develop or have the baby. Okay, so I told you before that we were going to be looking at some biological and social factors of the prenatal stage. The, the biological factors here are what are some of the genetic factors that are occurring um, that help maybe um, impact the development of a child? Well, genetic factors are things that maybe you're born with, your genes. Um, one thing that can be a genetic factor here is Down syndrome. Um, when the baby is the, or when it's the zygote stage, um, this is when they get an extra chromosome either from the mom or the dad. And this actually happens at conception. It can cause things like mental retardation. Um, they say statistically that it relates to the mother's age, but it can do um, with a lot of other things such as, you know, the environment that the mom um, was exposed to as it was growing up. Issues with this is it usually relates to heart and vision problems for the individual when it is born, along with maybe some mental and cognitive problems. There's also a whole list of different social and nurture factors of the mothers that can be impacting the fetal development, um, such as the mother's nutrition. Okay, is she providing the baby with the pro proper nutrients? Anxiety. Is the mom under a lot of stress that can cause the baby's heart rate to raise and it can cause um, physical and mental developmental issues. The mother's general health, the mom wants to make sure it's staying healthy. Um, the maternal age, they say, has a huge length. The older the mom, maybe the more issues she is going to have with her pregnancies. Fetal alcohol syndrome is when the baby is exposed to alcohol during um, the prenatal stages. It can cause physical and cognitive abnormalities in a child. Um, and it can definitely show the, some of the physical abnormalities. A baby has smaller eyes and smaller brains, um, and it also can cause mental retardation. And we'll explore this a little bit more in class. Teratogens are also things that the mom may be exposed to that ca can cause birth defects. These can be like illnesses such as rubella or the German measles, which they found can cause blindness and heart issues and deafness for your child. Syphilis can cause mental retardation. AIDS can be passed down uh, prior to birth, and then drug use. Actually, there is a, a baby can go through withdrawal when it is born because the mom is exposing the fetus to these drugs, and so when the baby is born, it can actually have withdrawal symptoms. So the newborn baby, when it is born, um, it's usually around 40 weeks, like I stated. Anything before 24 is pretty risky. Um, they do give a physical test to the baby when it's born, and it's called the APGAR test, A-P-G-A-R. Um, and it's done two times, usually in the first minute that it comes out and five minutes at, later. You want to have a score of your child for a 7 to 10, which is normal. It's showing that the, the baby is, has a normal pulse and has normal activities and normal responses, and it's breathing um, correctly. If it's under usually a 5, they may bring it into an um, prenatal intensive um, unit and might be, have that baby under surveillance. So the first thing that they check for is the appearance. Um, is the baby, does the baby look like it's, um, it's, it's not blue, okay? It looks like it's normally having normal circulation. Um, if it's scoring in the zero percentile, that's not necessarily, um, it could be having issues with its heart. It has a pulse. They check the pulse. They check the grimace. Is the baby um, crying? Is the baby um, maybe doing a facial? Is, 
has a facial reflexes. Is the baby active? Okay, is it moving its arms? And then the last one is it's going to look for, does it have, um, is it breathing? Um, does it have, is it very weak or is it strong? Is it crying? Is it screaming at you? So they will give it a score. Usually the first score is a little bit lower than the second um, because usually the first minute or two, um, it's kind of beginning to breathe on its own. Um, they say that that first minute is pretty um, incredible when the baby maybe cries for the first time. Um, newborns also show signs of reflexes, and this can be something from um, that we have evolved from. And these are reflexes that we're, we're bo essentially born with. Most humans are born with. Um, infants are born with reflexes that aid in survival. So this is that evolutionary. Um, it can connect to evolutionary perspective. Um, one is the rooting reflex, which helps them locate food. Um, from birth, the offspring will begin to react. It wants to survive. Okay, it's um, it's an unlearned involuntary response that occurs automatically in the presence of a certain stimuli. So in your packet, I know that I've included this chart, um, which is on the back of page, um, which is on the back of page 26. Um, and it shows you all the different reflexes that a baby has from birth. Um, the one is, and we'll go through these in class, but blinking, okay, it should be able to respond. That's a natural reflex. Once born um, the flash of light or a puff of air, it's going to close its eyes right away. Um, Babinski is if you touch the sole of a baby's foot, it's going to fan its toes out and twist its foot. It usually um, disappears at nine months to a year. Grasping, if you touch the baby's palm right from birth, it's going to grasp on, it's going to hold on to you tightly. After about three months, they see that this, um, slowly th this reflex um, stops appearing. Um, the moral or the startling reflex so this is the sudden stimulation such as hearing a loud noise or um, being slightly like kind of laid on the table. It's going to arch its back and throw its head and back out to kind of protect itself. Um, this disappears around three to four months. So if you're changing a baby, you might notice if you put them down on the changing table, they're going to fling everything out and then kind of pull themselves in. Rooting reflex is what I see most common is once you touch its cheek, it's going to turn its head and open its mouth, and it's going to begin sucking. Okay, it's going to be looking for food, essentially. Stepping, um, if an inf infant's held above a surface and the feet are lowered to touch the surface, it's going to move its feet as if it's going to start walking. So this is kind of, it's, it's kind of starting to put its feet down as if it needs to walk right away, even though it's not fully um, mentally, um, the brain isn't developed in order to keep its cerebellum balanced, right? Um, but it does begin to step outward as if it's going to start walking. Um, if you put an infant face down in water, they say they're, they're coordinated in terms of swimming. I, I wouldn't recommend this, okay? Um, we're not going to go there yet. Um, and then sucking, if you put an object um, by its mouth, it's going to suck automatically. So these are all the different reflexes. The big ones you will have to know are the Babinski and the rooting reflex um, that you might see on a test. Habituation, so I kept saying they decrease or they decrease if they decrease after a certain amount of time, nine months, two months. Um, habituation is the word for it. It's decrease in responding with repeated stimuli. So an example I can give here is um, my niece and nephew would respond to the dog barking at first. So it's a stimulus in their environment, roof, 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 the dog continues to bark. It would wake them up, um, they would respond to it, they'd start crying. But now I'm, I'm at their house and they're, you know, a year old and the dog's barking and they don't even respond to it anymore um, because they've been habituized um, or habituation has happened where they've become um, assimilated to that stimuli. So let's recap. We talked about developmental psychologists. You should know their role. Um, we talked about prenatal um, in terms of the stages, the zygote, the embryo, the fetus. We talked about teratogens. That's a big vocab term that you need to know. We also talked about the social and the um, biological factors of the prenatal stage. And then we briefly spoke about newborns. Um, and the things you want to know with that is what is habituation and the rooting and Babinski reflexes.